but they got away from it. But anyway, let's uh, we'll we'll get let's it going here. Yeah, let's um, do it. I'm gonna and, um, like I said, I'll keep a clock here, and we'll we'll sort of you know we'll try our best to keep the thirty. Who knows? We'll 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 try. Yeah, sure. hey, it's almost lunchtime, man. Yeah, I'm For you, you I'm, I've eaten my ham sandwich. You've eaten, you've eaten your sandwich. I'm good. That's my uh, that's the West Coast, over. man. I know we suffer on these things. We don't know <laughs> everything so. Happy New Year, everybody. MASL Monday back for 2023. Alex Bastiavansky here, and I am joined by the illustrious producer and host of MASL Under Review, Mr. Phil Lavanco. Happy New Year, buddy. How was What's your holiday? What's up, Alex? A holiday was good. We uh, didn't want to. We've been doing the merry-go-round with uh, broadcasters from around the league. Didn't want anyone to sort of feel the pressure to do it on the holiday. So I figured I'd pitch in, you know, up the bald count a little bit on the show. Well, Everyone let's just has... be honest. This is the best haircut we've yeah. seen of any guest yeah. on the show. And I'm not biased at all. I mean, Ackley's course, got so. hair. Zanaboni has hair. Vassos has like network hair. No, we got to, we got to, you know. Forget it, man. I shined it up special for the day for the new Heck year, yeah. by the way. I mean, you listen. Know, just you a little know, bit of polish. So. Bald men talking about soccer has worked, apparently. Absolutely. In this part of the country, in this part of the globe. So, so far, so good, man. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep and, it going. We just need and, some sport jackets. And you had a great Christmas with the family. The All family. good. Christmas Everyone was great. safe. That's great. Yeah. I went skiing. I didn't break Perfect. my leg. My ah, there leg. we go. That's good. Played yeah. golf out here because I'm on the West Coast. Yes. Broke 90. Um, I, I should put it, point out the, the course was a par 61, but beggars okay. can't be choosers. I played Mario golf. Does that count? Uh, yeah, sure. Man. There's snow everywhere Let's in central it. New York. Yeah. <laughs> Got a, lot, a of lot of major arena soccer league too. Mario a lot golf. Of stuff. It, it, you major know what, man? There was a lot that went down over awesome. the past week, um, leading up to the new year and just into the new year. And, uh, yeah, a lot of good stuff going on here. Let's start off with the Battle of Missouri because yes. we had Casey in St. Louis in seriously, man, what turned out to be one of the best games of the year so far. 6 5. Uh, Casey takes it in overtime, but phenomenal contest, wasn't it? Certainly my game of the year so far. The only one I could think of maybe is Chihuahua Monterey back and forth sort of contest down in Chihuahua, but this game had everything. I mean, this game had shootout saves. It had an overtime that was uh, back and forth um, track meet. Um, you know, it saves. It, it, huge saves. Huge saves by Neto and Nassimento. Like, huge, huge saves. saves. Yeah. So like you said, 6-5, right, was the result. Comets kind of pulled it out, and they needed it too, right? They needed that win because they lost an OT to uh, Monterey. Monterey's visit to KC. Um, so they really did need that win and, and the ambush battle back two goals with wow. under a minute to go. I thought Joey's head was going to explode. You know, he needed some green tea after he, that his one. Voice sure. broke. His voice broke oh my gosh. On, on one of the, one of the, the Paulo saves, uh, which oh I love. And of course he referred to him as the Brazilian Rob Lowe, I like which that. I'm stealing, which go ahead. Yeah, I've, yeah, I'm just I've already it. stolen it. So, I mean, you can borrow <laughs> it as well. So, uh, and, uh, yeah, 27 saves in the game. Uh, and, uh, and Neto had, uh, had, had 27 saves as well, uh, for KC Togba who had a fantastic game gets the overtime winner. Um, mm -hmm. another defender stepping up big time with the offense. So we had him here in Utica one year when we, you know, you know, at the Adirondack bank center, never really found his footing up here, went back to Kansas city and has, has gotten better literally with every game I've seen him play. Mm -hmm. He's got a rifle of a left foot and that play that won the game for Kansas city read the play like a book, stole it, went down the field, dribbled around uh, the Brazilian Rob Lowe for the goal. Yeah. Um, brilliant goal. And, and he had a, he had a great, like I said, two goals in the game for Togba. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it was, it was a great game. It was, it was exactly what we want to see out of indoor, just sort of, chaos back and forth and players stepping up and it's a, that's a good word it was utter chaos it was chaos um and anytime you've got a guy especially joey zanaboni who's energetic um yeah. at all times but losing his mind like that in the broadcast booth because the game was that good kc four and two now yeah uh, on the season what's your take on the comments so far they're looking pretty good i don't know i <laughs> not impressed is that okay i mean not impressed kansas, not impressed okay. kansas city they're a good team. 
I, I don't know. I think they're going to be a little bit of a flat track bully, in my opinion, right? I think they're going to beat up on a pretty weak Eastern Conference. I think when they come up against these bigger teams, right, your Monterey's of the world, your Chihuahuas of the world, your San Diego's of the world, and now we kind of talk about Mesquite a little bit in, in that level, maybe not yet tier one, but but close. I don't know, man. I'm I'm not Florida. That's the other. That's a tier one team in the East. I'm, I'm, Casey, know, so Casey's played two West teams. They lost to Mesquite five yeah. three. They lost to Monterey six five. Uh, close one at home. So I mean, they're they're playing the Western team stuff. But as we're going to discuss yeah. more as we get into it, the balance of power seems to lie in the West. Hundred um, percent. That's 100%. where the depth is. Yeah. 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 Balance but, of power is out there. But I just I, I want a signature victory. You know, like they. I mean, obviously, I. You almost kind of think the ambush games get thrown out the window, right? Because yeah. the two teams are going to play each other tight, literally forever and ever. You know, it's like it's like watching it's like watching uh, uh, Steelers Ravens. You know, well, those even, games are going to be close. Even if there's a drop in talent one year and one of the teams is not doing well, it doesn't matter because they're going to get up matter. for that game. The Battle of Missouri yeah. is just, yeah, off the charts. Let's move out west yeah. because we've got the return, or we had the return of the Dallas Derby. Uh, with the Outlaws returning to the league this season, going up against the sidekicks. It was uh, two games. The second one was a tight 187. The first one was a blowout for a while. Mesquite going up 8 1 on the sidekicks, on the sidekicks' home turf. Um, and what stung even more was Morales having a big weekend, of course, the reigning MESL rookie of the year who made the move from Dallas to Mesquite in the offseason. And he had a big weekend once again. Yeah, and he started things off on Thursday night with an absolute rocket. Into 17 the top. seconds oh, in, my was it? Seven, like, something along those lines. The, yeah. I, I think I think Matt Thornton, our friend down there in Dallas, was still trying to you know introduce the referees and what color shorts people were wearing. And all of a sudden, the ball's in the back of the net. They're Matt, he likes his cigars. I think he was lighting a cigar as he was doing that. <laughs> he, he was just getting into it. But yeah, what it a was. Shot. It was so quick, so fast. You got to turn these games on from the kickoff because all of a sudden it's one nothing. Both games on Thursday had opening goals yeah. in the first in the first minute. But yeah, that was one of those games. I think Dallas just kind of ran out of time, right? They they sort of got punched in the mouth early and often against players that they know so well. Yeah. from Mesquite, I, I, you know. So you know, a haymaker early, and they and they just sort of ran out of time. Kudos the end. to the sidekicks, though. Yeah. They could have thrown in the towel. Hundred percent. What eight one? Yeah. They continue to push. They make it eight six. That was on Thursday night. Saturday yeah. night. Um, and four goals for our buddy. Al um, four who, goals. Four goals, yeah. Four goals for uh, Alberto uh, yeah. Rodriguez. Yes. Um, I wish he wasn't wearing 69, but that's well, another well, show. You know, that's a that's a that's that's our no, late night show. We'll talk be, about that one, bad. right? That's our after midnight show, which we'll start talking <laughs> about numbers and stuff. But, yeah. um, but uh, you know, uh, it's uh, yeah, four goals for uh, great, Rodriguez. Great effort. Five goals on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but they dropped both games to, uh, and we got, and we got a shout out to, uh, Juan Gamboa for that yeah. fantastic penalty stop as yeah. well. Um, yep. didn't start the game. Don't nope. know why no worth speculating why, but came into the game, had to stop that penalty, made a gorgeous save. Beautiful. One of my favorite goaltenders in the league. Well, I love, I love watching him play. I love all the acrobatics he has. I love his Jorge Campos jersey he's got for yep. this year. His, his homage to Jorge. I like um, it because he's got my physique as well. I throw <laughs> the jersey the same way he does. You know, it's hey man, he's yeah. uh, he's he's solid between the posts, buddy. I love. No, he's I a love great. Gambo's he's a great game. goalkeeper. I love watching him play. Unfortunate yeah. that second game, a little bit back and forth. Mesquite kind of outpaced them a little bit in in, in that second game, and and Dallas once again. I don't know, man. Dallas now ha haven't won a game yet this season, right? I like the trade that they made to get um, Vic from, from Florida. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a cracker of a goal, too. Yeah. Can't remember which game because all these games are blending yeah, into each so, other. Yeah, there were so many games. I think yeah. it was the second one. Uh, yeah. I think it was the game in Mesquite, but yeah. which we're calling the fire pit, by the way. I've the decided that pit. as well. Okay. They call it the fire pit. So, Spicy. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So Vic had, Vic had the goal in the fire pit. 0-4 now for Dallas. 0-4. So on the flip side of that, tough start. Mesquite. On uh, fire. In, in, in your opinion, and we talked to uh, Craig Gelson about this a couple weeks ago before Christmas yeah. um, to get his take on it because they had given uh, the soccer's all they could handle 
Um, in that game, the Soccers won in overtime. It was an overtime game they won, yeah. but they gave them all they could handle. San Diego and Craig said, "Yeah, we were we were surprised by it." But I mean, I was going to ask you the question: Are they legit contenders? But I think the the answer is pretty obvious so far. Mesquite is for real. Yeah, I think all out of all the teams in this league now now. Not everyone has played. You know, Chihuahua's only played three games. Tacoma's mm-hmm. only played two. Um, San Diego's only played three games, right? But we, we've got a pretty good feel for how every team is. And, I, and I'm I'm pretty sure the only team that I would say has upped a tier, right, from tier two to tier one, the only team I would put in that category is Mesquite. Because we just didn't know, right? We, we, we knew the players that they had, Morales, Ortiz, um, Polo in, in goal, um, I like that guy, uh, number 53, that they have, too. Um, can't remember his name. Um, he's a great target, too. I think he's got some some sizzle to him as well. They're a Tier 1 team now, Mesquite. Um, I think I think that they are going to cause some problems. You know, Tattoo's got him humming. Uh, Pablo De Silva is, a, you know, a field general, right? He's yeah, He yeah. had some gorgeous assists this weekend. Um, out, for me... Every team in the league, right, has still sort of stayed in their tier, right? Except for Mesquite. They're the only team that I would go from tier two to tier one. How about you? Yeah, it's uh, I, I, it's been really fun watching Mesquite so far this season. Yeah. I think right now you've got you've got your upper upper, you know, decker of you've got your your four. Yeah, teams, your tier one. You got your San Diego. Mm-hmm. Um, as mentioned, only three games played. You've got Monterey. Tier one. You've got Monterey Mesquite and you've got Chihuahua, which, mm-hmm. and that leads us into our next one because Chihuahua goes to take on the power in the East, the Florida Tropics. And who's the only other tier one team to sort of close that loop, right? I, I There's would, only one tier one in the East. It's, it's Florida. It's, it's Florida and, and they're running gun. And well, we'll talk about the defense in a second. Yeah. Um, But, but, you know, they nine, five, they go down to the Savage. Um, and I, I don't fault Navarrete. I mean, you know, I mean, Chihuahua is just clinical in some of the finishing. goals they scored. They're beautiful, were beautiful technique volleys. Um, you know, we we talked about it too. It was it's been a hard Christmas sort of stretch for for Florida. They're almost like an EPL games, team. Four games four in a games. week, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they had those two Utica games, and then last week in the games as well, and then. Two Baltimore games before Christmas, then the right. Utica track meet part, ten part nine. Me. That's right. It's all good. It's yeah, all good. two Utica games were part of me. Two Baltimore games. That's right. Where they visited. Part. I'm yeah. getting. Ba- I always get Baltimore and Utica for some reason. They're, I'm confused, even though they have completely different color structures. I don't know yeah. what it is, but uh, it's, it's northeast northeast North bias, North. right? Northeast bias, man. But northeast bias. Yeah, uh, those those two games against the Blast, and of course yeah. they dropped that that one game uh, to the Blast. Mm-hmm. Uh, their their first loss of the season. And uh, and then the Chihuahua game. Now, Navarrete, as I said, uh, not going to fault him for that. He's played every game so far this season for the Tropics. It was eight goals on twenty four shots, though. Um, yeah. You know, so it's it, it bad for his stat line anyway. But Florida needs another guy they can throw in there because he's he's played every game so far. It'd be nice to have someone that can take the load off every yeah. once in a while that they can put in. Yeah, and Rainier House from last year is stuck in Iowa, right? So it's Navarrete's job to lose. But I, I thought Brian Ackley did a great job during the broadcast and our Twitch commenters as well, by the way. You know, you could see it. You can see that when Florida tried to kick it in that extra gear against Chihuahua, there was nothing left. They didn't have any legs left. They didn't have, you know, that sort of speed of thought that Chihuahua zipping the ball around. Um, you know, I, I think that not not – I don't think Chihuahua was was in danger of ever sort of losing control of that game against yeah. Florida, but I think I think it was a legs issue. I think it was sort of tired minds issue. Um, you know, three of the four games were at home, sure, but you know, it's the holidays, it's travel, it's in the snow, out of the snow in Utica, which was a track meet, by the yeah. way. Yeah, we talked about ten nine where they had to sort of, you know, Utica gave them all they got at home right after Christmas, um, you know, it, it probably, you know, when we, we watch those best of seven playoff series, right. And the team that goes to seven and battles and battles and battles that next, that next series, they don't have any gas anymore. Just kind so, of ran out of steam in the end. That's, a, that's, that's sort of my call on that situation. I don't, you know, it's, it's Florida's first loss in regulation of the year. They had that OT loss. Like you said, 
to the blast before Christmas. But, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to evaluate. I don't I, – I, I sort of give them – I won't give them a pass. I think passes, you know, but you, you can clearly see, you know, tired minds, tired legs in that game. Right. Um, you know. And uh, it, Utica, um, yeah. t- tough again. You know, they, they played them tough. They were close. Loving those Utica crowds still, man. They are loud. Yeah. They are proud. Yeah. Um, come up uh, uh, just short. What's what's your uh, thought on Utica so far this season? I mean, 44 goals allowed. That's clearly the Achilles heel there. Is they got to try to step up a bit more defensively than what they've shown so far. Yeah, not the worst goal difference in the league at minus five, right? So obviously they want to track meet every game. They want they want to go up and down. They want to run and gun. Um, my take on, on the Utica team is a lot of turnover, right? They were a very old team last year. Um, they, they needed some fresh legs. Um, they lost basically their entire back line. Um, from these past since they've moved to Utica, right? right. So they 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 fresh start uh, with the head coach. With I was very curious to see what would happen um, with the new coach coming yeah. in because, like I said, there were the pieces of the roster sort of needed to flip over. Now we're on this year, right? And they're not playing four defenders every game. I thought Milwaukee's commenters did a great job of sort of pointing that out. If you look at Utica's roster, they're not dressing four defenders, yeah. two defenders, one defender. Mm-hmm. You know, they're moving Bo, Bo Yelovic forward, target back to defense, target back to defense. So so clearly, um, you know, they they want to run and gun, and, and that's – but And that's I, and that's extremely dangerous, though. Very especially, dangerous. Especially in the game against the reigning two-time MVP, Ian Bennett, who absolutely – Ate them for breakfast. Forced them. Ate them Five for goals yeah. for uh, IB26. Yeah. Who's looking like, a, a, again, a very strong MVP, MVP candidate again mm. this season. Um, so, yeah, an interesting strategy when you're going to be facing the firepower that they were. Uh, yeah. So, I, yeah. So, so there's a construction issue with that roster a little bit in Utica. I, I, you know, they've got two wins already. I, they're a scrappy team, right? They're a litmus test team. If you don't bring your A game, you're going to lose my opinion, you know, Um, but Milwaukee, that game, Milwaukee sort of met the test. They have a lot of players going forward. Um, Ian Bennett, as you mentioned, is, is the reigning MVP. Andre Hain is having a great season as well. He's one of my favorite targets in the league. Um, You know, and and he had a couple of these back heel assists, play it into him. Now, you know, they got no defenders there in Utica, so he got to eat, you know, as well, you know, but he decided to play provider. Um, there were lunches you know, being eaten all around. Oh man. my gosh! No you question know, and, about it. So I don't. They're not a tier one team for me. Well, Milwaukee, you know, haven't lost in regulation yet this year. I'm still. Mm-hmm. I want to see the big. They haven't really. They haven't faced any Western teams yet, right? So I mean, it's. I, I mean, uh, that's that's the gauntlet. You know, all the, Kansas City, Milwaukee, Baltimore is probably that tier two for me, um, especially in the East. I, I need them to see the. I need them to to watch these these Western games before I can sort of, you know, say that they're going to do some damage, right? Yeah, say that I they're going to make some noise. A, a game against St. Louis, two against KC, and one against Utica so far. So yeah, um, yeah. as we get more inter, you know, they almost coughed up that game to KC too. Yes. Oh yeah, they had a huge lead. Oh, they had a yeah. the huge six-one yeah. lead. So I need um, more. I need more from Milwaukee. You know, love that field. My favorite. My favorite turf. In yep. the league, that that black turf, giant wave logo, um, yeah. need a little bit more though. Yeah, I need I need a signature win to impress between the me. black you know turf I mean? in Milwaukee and the blue turf in Utica for me. I go back and forth on that. So. I'm going black. I'm, I'm going, going black. Text conversation here that I can't seem to silence on my computer. I apologize. <laughs> um, Not coming okay. through. We're good. Um, and and uh, hold on, I bet you I'm about to get a whole bunch of them here. I'm going to silence it. Um, yeah. Let's do as you mentioned the. Uh, um, uh, I'm not sure if we mentioned it off the top, but some way too early um, yeah. predictions. I don't know if we're predicting, but we're saying up to this point, who would be your... Yeah, we're recklessly giving awards out, right? Sure. Just yeah. toss in the Christ- late Christmas presents. It's late right? Christmas. So- we need we need some evergreen content on MASL Monday. God, man. We're going to dip and, into and, the award talk. So we'll do three. We'll do MVP, goalie, yeah. and defender. So let's go with your most valuable player at this point, not who's going to be at the end of the season, nope. but up to this point, who's your most valuable player? Lucas Roque, Baltimore blast. I think he's had the hottest start to the year. 
Um, he is I, Baltimore now. Again, now we're going to debate sort of, you know, because they're two and three and one on the season so far, right? Middle of the pack. But there is an undeniable impact that uh, Lucas Roque has had on that team. He has carried them in these victories. The reason uh, that some of these losses aren't bigger is because of Lucas Roque. So for me, the early MVP so far in the season is Roque from Baltimore. Okay, so I pretty much you stole my number one, but my 1B was, okay. was well, Bennett. Yeah. Um, and, and my Roque was the reason why that I was going to say is, um, uh, was as we've discussed before on the show, just the spread between him and the second scorer on the team, which was Mo Gonzalez, uh, has, has, has the, yeah. if the gap has narrowed now, cause, uh, Roque has got 15 points in six games and Gonzalez has got nine, but for a while there, there was 10 points between them. I mean, Roque was doing all the scoring on the team. So it is Roque, but it, Ian Bennett has played two less games. He got he's played four. Right. He's got twelve points, um, and that's ten, a, ten goals in the year. But five of them just came as well. Five of them just came. Just came against you a know? team that, as you mentioned, is having a problem playing defense right yes. now. So, but uh, Andre defensively Hain, challenged. Yes, Andre Hain eight points in four games. Yeah. So the four point spread between him and Hain. Um, But those would be my 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 two guys right now. That because on the Western teams, it's much more sp- evenly spread out. Yeah. Also than the scores. Uh, yep. There's not one guy who's standing out in each team that's really pulling away from everyone else on their team. And I go by the definition to me, MVP is always not the best team, but which player is the most valuable to their team. Um, and yeah. to me, Roque and Bennett are they're everything to yeah. their team right now. So I do uh, think you have to make the playoffs, though. I think I think to, to make it, MVP, yeah. I think you have to make the playoffs. I think it's it's. It's a silly qualification, but I do think it exists, right? Okay. It, it's it's not, it, you know, there's a lot of teams that make the playoffs in the MASL. I think if you're going to be the MVP of the league, I think you have to propel your team to at least qualify for the playoffs. Well, you wouldn't have heard the end of it last year if uh, Bennett, after a dominant season like that, <laughs> didn't squeak into the playoffs then, against San Diego in the first round. Yeah. If he hadn't been named MVP, of course he was. So. But what happened? What happened in those games? Right? It was. It was. It was a. It was a class above. Right. I mean, yeah. soccer's kind of showed. Milwaukee that they sort of I mean did they even break it out of third no, gear who knows it wasn't even close it yeah, wasn't, it it wasn't, wasn't close. but I think last year Milwaukee was happy to make the playoffs yeah I, I think sure. they I think they knew that it was uh it was it wasn't going to get much better than that but yeah. um okay let's do a, a goalie who, who's your goalie uh, of the year so far I'm going chalk for goalie. It's Boris Pardo out in San Diego. He's basically won two games for them already. That game Stop against him. Mesquite that we've yeah. sort of referenced now for weeks. I mean, all of those saves at the end when the sixth attacker was out and it was a firing squad and and Pardo stood on his head. That game, I'm I'm remembering another game. I think it was a Monterey. It might have been an Empire game, but I think it was a Monterey one. Another one where he just, I mean, just save after save after save. Um, I'm not just saying it because he's another Queens boy like myself. <laughs> right? But you got you got to rep. Come on, you, you know, there yeah. the bias was implied. Yeah. I think is is the way to go there. But for me, he's the best goalkeeper of the league, and until I see otherwise from anyone else, it's his trophy to lose. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be different to be different, also because Pardo, um, I mean, you know, reigning goalie of the year, he's incredible. He's only played three games, right. so I'm gonna look at another team that's had tremendous success so far that's played more games, and I'm gonna go with Eduardo Pollo Cortez. I don't think that's uh, gonna be different to be different, though. I think that's. A- um, I'm just it was, it's easy to go with Pardo, but I mean, so I mean, look at it, five five and one, uh, five wins, yeah. first in the league. There's sure there's a case here. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, 786 save percentage, third, 4.19 yeah. goals against, third, 88 saves, third. I mean, no one has got that kind of consistency across the league. Uh, no goalie has that consistency right now across all those categories that um, that Cortez has. Um, and I just think Mesquite's a great story, and I, pl- I think he's played a big part in that. Now, as Boris starts to get in there and rack up more wins and get more shots and stuff, you know, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to slide back. You know, but I mean, that, not no. I, it's a compelling. We're sure. doing. Listen, but what we're he's he is uh, Cortez has really really impressed me so far. I got to give it to him. So, and he's probably been the most impressive goalie. Yep. So far this year, I think 
I, like I said before, it's it's not being different to be different, right? It's yeah. it's that guy, Cortez and Pardo are the two horse race as we are entering the very, very embryonic stages of this season. Yeah, and Reynoso as well yep. um, from the, Monterey having a tremendous season so far. Yep. And um, Defender, Defender, give yeah. me your top Defender of the year so far, Phil. So for me, it's Drew Ruggles, right? And 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 when we had Brian Ackley on, he said that when um, you know if Ruggles wanted to, we could score thirty goals a year um, from the back. I have just been so impressed with his play in Florida. I think right now, I mean, they have so many players on that team, right? Piraeus, Reggett, Dantas. However, I think Reg, I'm Reggett. I think that uh, Ruggles. Drew Ruggles has been a cut above, frankly. Uh, all season, whether it's assists, whether it's goals, whether it's uh, controlling the tempo of the game, you know, defenders is hard, man. Plus, who wants to watch defense? You, it, right? It's, it's also you, you've got to watch the full games to to right. appreciate it, not just the highlight packs, for right. sure. And as, so, if you're not, if you don't have time to watch the full games, right. you're going to miss a lot of that stuff, a lot of the nuances. Um, I, I've I've got uh, I've got John Sosa um, of KC. I, right. and, I mean, it's him and Drew, it's flip a coin, you know. But so says leading the league in scoring, and is that's defender. that's huge. I mean, sixteen that's, points. And that's the case right there. It is, and he does not slack defensively. I mean, right. he's he's tremendous defensively. I know we talked to Craig, and he said the blocks aren't everything. They're not, but as an immediate right. stat to pull up, he does have seventeen blocks in eight games. Um, Ruggles has eleven blocks in six games. Last year, by the way, nice. Drew had um, nineteen blocks in twenty games. He's well on pace to to break that. Um, and Sosa's on pace to break his number from last year as well. But you know what? You could go with Ruggles or Sosa at this point, man. Yeah. There's no wrong answer there. No, so, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I think, but I think sort of the more impressive offensive stats from a defender right now live live in live in the East, right? right. So Craig, I'm sorry, those Western teams. I I know you have some very impressive defensemen on the soccer. Uh, and we're gonna see more of them. Yeah, up, and, and then you we'll, know. Rejig the conversation. There's plenty of time. It's only a month in. As we've yep. said, this is way too early. These are the way too early, but we, we titled the way too it that. Award. We titled it that. The we way too this. early awards, right? Yeah. So um, let's just quickly, uh, we sort of talked about who we think that are the tiers right now. And yeah. Everything. So I, um, let's just go to, how about your, uh, your goal of the week? What was your we, favorite goal of the week? We mentioned it before. I'm going to mention again, the reigning rookie of the year, Luis Morales, 16 seconds into the game. Top bins, what a left banger. foot, absolute Beautiful. banger. The yeah. type of goals that this league sort of produce uncomparably to no other yeah. league in, in, around the world. It was so aesthetically pleasing to see somebody beautiful. just wrap their foot around it and it just take off like a rocket ship. Oh, what a gorgeous Is goal. Playing against his old team, doing yeah. that 16 seconds in, that's got to feel good. What about yours? Um, I'm going to go with, I'm going to give Dallas some love here. Sure. Um, and uh, go with Alberto Rodriguez, the fourth goal against Mesquite, where he turned the defender inside out, went top cheese. Um, it was top right corner. Uh, just a beautiful goal. And uh, four goals on the day for yeah. Rodriguez in uh, a losing cause. But we got to give Dallas some love because it was a tough little weekend. So I think they just ran out of time on yeah. Thursday. Yeah. You but, know, but, but like we said before, good for them for, you know, not phoning in the towel, not, yeah. you know, what I say, yeah. phoning in the towel. I, I mean, just said it's, phoning you know, in the towel. Apparently new year's is still, words are you know, hard. Yeah. Um, there we go. Not throwing in the towel or phoning it in. Take your, uh, take your pick folks. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and favorite moments of the weekend, you've got a really good one that I so, thought was absolutely hilarious. Shouts to the Milwaukee fans. Shouts to the production in Milwaukee that caught the fans with the signs. I'm not going to go any further. You can watch the replay on Twitch. But those two fans with their signs, my favorite moment of the weekend. Controversial, but hey, stir in the pot. Love Milwaukee fans. Uh, I'm going to go with just a, a, it was a really good moment yeah. from a specific game. And another team that, you know, I, I've, I've always had an affinity for, for, for Utica um, and, and the blue turf and the great fans, um, you know, they, they did drop this contest against Florida, but uh, Isaac Somo um, scores an absolutely beautiful goal. And on the save, so earlier in the play, Andrew Coughlin makes a massive save um, on, uh, who was on, it was on uh, Taylor Walter Barnes. Mm. 
And ball shouts, goes up. Shouts to Taylor Walter Bond for wearing eye black on Thursday. Okay, there you go. Don't know yeah. why he did. Not going to ask questions, but appreciated it. Don't uh, w- whatever they do to make it work. It's it's working yeah. for them. So stick with it, right? But yeah. that play, beautiful save up the floor. Uh, beautiful shot by Samo. And uh, that was my moment. You know, I couldn't, I can't match the signs. The signs are in the league by themselves, but from, <laughs> from a play on the floor, that's the one that does it, yeah. uh, does it for me. And Florida. Uh, I got a fa- Honestly, it's like you try and silence a family chat here. Oh, you know, when you get on, a, you got a family chat going on and I've got 25 family sure. members on it. And uh, even though I've silenced it for something that keeps beep, beep, beeping here. Oh yeah. So 25. you're going to, you're going to start to hear it go ding, 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 which is our thing to get off soon. Um, before we do, yeah. uh, number one, uh, 17,000, uh, fans tuning in for the, uh, Casey St. Louis awesome. game on Twitch, which leads me into my, of course, everybody, please. Uh, if you can't be there to watch the games live, watch them on Twitch, watch mm-hmm. them live, get the full on, um, uh, watch the archive, yep. uh, get your fill of MASL, um, on YouTube as well. Of course, mm-hmm. please. Got all our highlights there. Yeah. We like our subscribe show there. to yep. this show. Uh, to Phil's amazing show, of course, MASL under review. Ryan does all um, the work. I just oh, make jokes. Oh man, it's so good though. Uh, I, I love seeing yep. you know and, and and filling it in on like I mean from the referee's perspective whether it was a good call or not. It's it's amazing. It's, it's thankless. It's thankless. It's, it's a thankless job. It's a good job to have, man. Though it's yeah. uh, when you've got a pro like that working alongside you, isn't it? So, yeah. and sure. uh, just before we go, uh, we need to uh, just very quick. Rest in peace to one of the, if not the, all-time great in Pele, um, who inspired so many people. And and Phil, it's it's got to be said, had just obviously a massive impact on mm. soccer in the United States when he came over to play with the Cosmos. From that point on, the effect it had on American soccer, which, of course, our own Shep Messing, um, can certainly attest to as yep. his as teammate on the on the New York Cosmos, yep. but um, just an, an incredible effect. First of all, in the United States, let's look at it from that perspective. Yeah, our writer uh, for Major Arena Soccer, Michael Lewis at Soccer Writer on Twitter, wrote a phenomenal article about Pele. Um, it's it's on his feed, frontrowsoccer.com. I think he wrote it for the Guardian. Um, so check out his feed at at Soccer Writer, Michael Lewis, who's who's the grand poobah of, of, of American soccer, you know, he's, yeah. he's um, so anyway, I mean, d- nothing that comes out of this bald man's head is going to be as impactful as what Michael Lewis wrote. So do me a favor, just find what he's wrote. His words are much more eloquent than anything I could come up with. And, uh, and of course, Michael's articles are all on um, MASLsoccer.com mm-hmm. as well on the league website. He writes great feature stories. Uh, just growing up as a kid, I mean, he was, you know, he was my hero um, up until, Mar- you know, Maradona came along in 86. Um, but uh, Pele was, you know, he played his greatest soccer before, you know, I was able to realize what soccer was when I was a youngster. But um, uh, my dad actually uh, showed me the other day because, of course, my, so my dad, the only point I'm going to say about this whole story is all it didn't matter if people were, were professionals playing the game or just fans. Everyone was in awe of, of him back in the day. And my dad played professionally in the North American soccer league uh, in the early seventies. So never played against Pele when he came in in 75, I think with the cosmos, but my dad, as I mentioned on the last show was there in Argentina in 78 as a broadcaster with the, with the Canadian broadcasting corporation. And he showed me the other day um, is uh, they they would have uh, tickets for the I mean for admission to the press box and everything that would get them in. So he has this from every single game that he was in the press box, and uh, Pele was in there for uh, match fourteen, which I still got to figure out what which <laughs> match fourteen is because he can't remember. But and and Pele was in there with uh, the media guys, and uh, Pele did as usual as he did for for everyone, which is how are you, my friend, even if he didn't know you. And he said he could not be more gracious, could not have been a nicer guy. Sign the ticket. Um, which we're showing, I think. And um, yeah. it's uh, it, it's uh, just, you know, a great loss, but what a life uh, that, that that man lived and what an incredible impact. So it was uh, worth worth mentioning, I think, Phil, before we get off here. Um, just, I couldn't uh, agree more. Rest in peace. And uh, we're going to run, man. So uh, yeah. thank you for taking the time. Everyone, please don't forget to uh, to rate, like, subscribe, comment. If you, if you agree yeah. or disagree with what we're saying, 
Yeah. Uh, by all means, uh, hit us up in the comments and let us yeah. know what you think. Underscore and- Hey Phil on Twitter if you want to directly point those comments at me. Rip him a new one, folks. Yeah, Let him not? know Co- or compliment his haircut, whichever you want to do. But uh, <laughs> it's, there's lots, lots to say to Phil. But uh, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to be in front of the camera. Next show, I'm going to be back behind it. We'll, we'll continue the merry-go-round with broadcasters um, who, who are much more knowledgeable about this league than I am. It should be mentioned, by the way, Phil Levanco is uh, my producer on this show. <laughs> So yeah. I, I went gentle on him today because I still want to have a job next week. So no. Phil, you're awesome, buddy. Thank you so much for doing this. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a great holiday season. And uh, we will see you again next Monday.